morning, chaps. Good morning, everybody. Welcome along. Good morning. So we're in the brewery this morning after a nice, uh, nice day yesterday, and uh, I've gone to put Beersmith on the new computer that we've got here, and I've found out that there's been an upgrade that I didn't know about. It's a paid upgrade to Beersmith three. So uh, I've gone ahead and installed it. I've used some of the money from the Patreon account to uh, to pay for this. So I've gone for the professional um, subscription, uh, $39 or $49 per year. And this gives me access to everything, including cloud storage. So thanks everybody for donating on Patreon to make that possible. So what I'm gonna do for the duration of the day is try and transfer all of my profiles across onto the new Beersmith uh, um, application. So hopefully we can transfer across all of the profiles, the water profiles, the equipment profiles, and then we'll put together a recipe at some point for a batch of bitter, and uh, we'll put Beersmith 3 th through its paces, I think. Yeah, that's a good plan. Uh, but before I do that, I need to be able to print and scan and stuff because I have got a purchase order from Crusader Kegs, also now changing their name to LNDL Kegs Europe. And these guys are going to supply me with uh, 30 Sankey S type 30 litre kegs, no, 20 30 litre kegs, get it right, lad, and 40 9 gallon casks. And these are on a higher purchase agreement, which is going to cost me. Approximately £67 per keg and £60 per cask and then there's the finance package on top which takes the average price up to around £88 over the three year term which I think is fairly reasonable because I don't have to pay it right now so that's going to mean we'll have uh, payments for this of around the 150 quid a month mark to get us off the ground with some containers and then once we've paid that for 36 months they will belong to us so I need the printer this one here so I need to get the printer up and running it's a Canon printer I don't know if it actually works but I do need a figure of eight cable and I've got some at home so let's go and get those right folks we are in the shed not often we come in here these days, is it? So we've got piles and piles of cables that are not being used, but always saved for such an occasion. But I think we'll find what we're looking for in here. Oh my gosh. Or maybe up here. No, they're the wrong style. Aha! There's one end of one that we want. Let's unravel this. And see what it produces on the other end. A plug. Indeed. So that will power the printer. And I think we had something else with another one of those on, so... I will keep looking. See if we find another one. I wonder what that's connected to. Nothing. Put a little less. That's connected to nothing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's a lot of crap in here. A lot of crap. Okay. I can't see any more. So this is our last port of call. No. Right, so what we've got the one. We've got the one that'll do, I think. Right. Yes. Right, let's grab that. And let's go. Well, I've cut yesterday's footage uh, just after I've come out of the shed. Now I went back up to the brewery and uh, 
well things didn't pan out quite as I'd hoped. So once up there, I actually downloaded the new Beersmith 3 program uh, to enable me to uh, move forward with the new PC that we've got and put up to date software on there, transfer all my recipes across and finalise uh, all the recipes as well. So as I was doing that and documenting them, I noticed that when I set up the equipment profile, the Whirlpool additions uh, threw out the IBUs on the beers. So I went and tasted the beer and now it's actually uh, reached final gravity. It's extremely, extremely bitter because there are no residual sugars remaining to hide this bitterness content. So I've figured out what's happened. The Whirlpool additions have gone in there. I've put them in incorrectly for some reason. Uh, and as we've scaled the recipe, I've not noticed that increase in IBU. So normally the beer that I'm looking for, for the Blonde Ale for instance, runs at about 26 IBUs. But on this occasion, we're closer to 50. Now, 50 IBUs on a beer that's finishing at 10.06, it's no, just no. So I have to, are you all right, Abigail? Yeah. So I have to come up with a solution. And that solution is, unfortunately, I'm gonna ditch the beers. I know you might think, well, you're crazy, just sell it as a different beer. Uh, surely there's something that you can do. I could back sweeten the beer, believe it or not. So in order for me to uh, determine that that was the issue, I took a sample of the beer yesterday. I should have got this on film, but you can imagine I was a little bit disappointed. So I took a sample of the beer, uh, I mixed up a sugar solution, and I poured some of the sugar solution into the beer, stirred it round and tried it. Tasted slightly, you know, you could taste I put sugar in it, but it took away that bitterness. It rebalanced the beer. And yeah, apart from getting over that disappointment and not filming it, it's led me to do this little sort of interruption this morning on yesterday's vlog. I mean, it's now half past 10 on Saturday, so the vlog's gonna go up late. You'll be watching this late, it's not eight o'clock as usual. Um, and yeah, it's disappointed me, A, because I, I knew it's a fix that I could have and should have spotted in the scaling of the recipe. It's a, f it's a mistake that's not going to show itself throughout the brew process because you can't tell the bitterness of your wort when it's sweet. You can't tell what it's going to be like after fermentation. And I'm disappointed because I dry hopped both batches. And it was when I put the dry hops in that that's when it's really come to the forefront, this over bitterness. So uh, yeah, disappointing way to end the week. But I'm going to go in tomorrow uh, with a positive note and I'm going to set myself up for a brew day for Monday and we will ditch these beers and we will do them again. Uh, I've run into bigger problems than this in the past, I've ditched bigger batches than this in the past. So it's not a big issue, it is a disappointment, but I think what we're going to do this time round is we'll just run straight on with beers that we want on the bar. So we'll do a do a bitter. <laughs> yeah, I know, sticks in my teeth a little bit that word at the moment. And we'll do a blonde ale. And maybe we'll revisit that Ella recipe because I think it had real potential. So there are three beers that we might just brew next week. Well actually I'll just do two of them, because hopefully next Saturday Tom and Froggy are gonna be with us all day to do a batch of beer on the kit. So, what rough with the smooth, sharing everything on this vlog, the highs and the lows. So, uh, it is what it is, folks. Uh, so before I go, thanks for the support from everybody in the comments over the past couple of weeks. I've not had a chance to get to everyone's comment and reply, because things are starting to pick up with this now. And of course, going and picking all that stuff up from the auction the other day, put me behind a couple of days. I've got lots of furniture to put together. So I'm reading the comments. Everyone who's supporting me on Patreon is helping me 
get this stuff done, like the software for instance from Beer Smith, some bits and bobs that we bought from GC Supplies, Patreon is helping fund that, so if you do feel like you can chuck a couple of quid into the hat, that's where you want to be. And uh, you can also follow me on all the usual things, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, all at HarryBruce69. So uh, yeah, I don't normally sign off like this, but I'm trying to pick myself up for the coming week and we will start again. So the next vlog you're going to see now is probably going to be Monday morning of me tomorrow getting the grains ready when I'm regrouped. So we'll see you then, bright and early, 8 o'clock, don't miss it.